Now let's talk about the generators. So what are the generators? If you look at the component that is connected to the identity, then the generator is something like you know, this matrix. Or if I use I here, this matrix. Okay. So we are gonna switch between the two different conventions. Okay, to find the generators, we consider an infinitesimal an infinitesimal um, like um, transformation. of O-N, it's actually S-O-N because it's only the S-O part which can have infinitesimal transformation. So we write O as the identity operator matrix plus I conventionally. Theta A, these are the parameters, the real parameters times T-A. These are the generators, okay? So A goes from one to the dimension, which is N minus one, N times N minus one by two. Okay, is this uh, formula understandable? These are the generators. And these are the independent parameters. So now, the fact that O transpose O is equals to one, if we expand this to order theta, we get that TA transpose is minus TA. In other words, TA is an antisymmetric matrix. Okay. But you know, the matrices O, they are real. They are real. You know, uh, but the way we have parameterized this, because this is factor of I, because of this thing, because of this factor of I, uh, you know, these are pure imaginary. Right? So this fact combined with this fact means that TAR actually Hermitian. You know, mathematicians don't put this I over there and sometimes we won't either in not for this group but for other groups in that case you know uh, ta would have been real and in that case just uh, the statement that they're anti-symmetric would have sufficed but because we are physicists we want eyes that's why it becomes not just anti-symmetric but pure imaginary and therefore they're they're hermitian okay now we we do something clever. We we go for a clever labeling, clever labeling strategy for the SON generators. So the generator that generates rotation in the AB plane, so the generator that generates, say a rotation in the AB plane, we denote it by T 
superscript AB. Okay, so this is not an index, it's a superscript. And we, the way we label the generators is that they're antisymmetric in their superscript. Okay. Because they're antisymmetric in their superscript, you know, there are no generators with the same, uh, same, same two superscripts, right? So A and B, you know, they take values from one to N because, you know, there we have, we can think of them as rotation on N, on, in N dimensions. So if I look at this, then you can show that the number of linearly independent generators is, can you tell, can someone tell me what the lin linearly independent generators are with this, you know, this uh, scheme? Parameter in linearly independent parameter, Jotogulo, Toguloi. Exactly. What is that? It's n squared minus, minus n. n by two. But this clever scheme gives me exactly this number, right? Okay. So now we can actually write down an explicit form of this generator. Okay. So T A B. This the you know these are essentially the label of the generator, but it's a matrix and it's a, an N by N matrix, right? Because it's a rotation in N dimensions. So it's going to have some index, say the index is CD. Now note that way we have labeled it, it has to be anti-symmetric in AB. But we also saw that it's also an antisymmetric matrix. So it has to be antisymmetric in CD. And not only that, it's purely imaginary. That essentially boils it down to only one choice or one or two choices. There's a factor of I and inside we just have arranged some delta Kronecker delta in a way such that it's anti-symmetric in CD and AB. Okay, so you can verify that this expression for the elements of the generator is anti-symmetric both in AB and CD. Okay, so this is the explicit form of the generator of the SOM group. There might be a minus sign missing and stuff like that that I don't really care about. And also open group. Right? Are there any questions? So now we can define, we can work out the Lie algebra. Okay, so the Lie algebra you can show is if I take the commutator 
of two of the generators, it's going to be I times delta a C T B D minus delta of B C T of A D minus delta of A D T of B C plus delta of B D T of A C. T of AC. And this is worth doing. Okay. So this is the kind of thing that you have to do at least once in your life. No, otherwise, you cannot claim to be, you know, a group theorist. Okay. And in doing so, you might find that I made a mistake in a sign. That's fine. Okay, I want you to work this out. Well, it'll be like maybe a page or two of algebra. You wanted practice with indices? Here is your practice with indices. Okay. Okay, now let's you know uh, make an observation. Suppose you make a rotation in the one two plane. Suppose you're in you're working with O four, and you make a rotation in the three four plane. So these two rotations should commute, right? Because they don't share any directions. In fact, you can show that T of one, two will have the form of something like this. And T of three, four will have the form of, so this, these are zeros, everything else is zero. These are basically sparse matrices. Okay. And therefore, they will commit, right? And this agrees with our physical intuition is that if there are two different planes, then they, you know, rotation in these two independent planes will commute. This this is uh, agrees with our higher dimensional intuition. Do you agree with this? Don't tell me you've never wondered about what life would be like in four dimensions. So if you're in four dimensions, you can choose any two planes, say one and two, and and you know, and rotate a vector in one and two plane. And there is another plane you know, which is orthogonal to that plane. So this is the one, two plane, and there's a three, four plane. Nothing's gonna happen there. So any rotation you do in that plane, you know, is going to be independent of this too. So they should commute, right? So this means that there will be a certain set of generators of SON which will commute amongst themselves, right? And this leads us to the definition of a Cartan subalgebra, of the Cartan subalgebra. So what is a Cartan subalgebra? It is the set of, uh, I should say the, the maximal set
of mutually commuting generators of a Lie algebra <clears throat> is called the Curtin subalgebra or in short CSA. And the dimension of, or the number of generators of the Curtin subalgebra is known as the rank of the group, of the Lie group G. Okay, so we are defining two things, the Curtin subalgebra and the rank. Okay. So do we have any questions? <clears throat>